It was only a few years ago that I discovered that everything I thought I knew about poverty was wrong.、Hmm. It all started when I accidentally stumbled upon a paper by a few American psychologists. They had traveled 8,000 miles all the way to India for a fascinating study, and it was an experiment with sugarcane farmers. You should know that these farmers collect about 60% of their annual income all at once, right after the harvest. And this means that they're relatively poor one part of the year, and rich the other. And the researchers asked them to do an IQ test before and after the harvest. What they subsequently discovered completely blew my mind. The farmers scored much worse on the test before the harvest. The effects of living in poverty, it turns out, correspond to losing 14 points of IQ. Now, to give you an idea. That's comparable to losing a night's sleep, or the effects of alcoholism. Modern economists have a few solutions up their sleeves. We could help the poor with their paperwork or send them a text message to remind them to pay their bills. Now, this type of solution is hugely popular with modern politicians, mostly because, well, they cost next to nothing. These solutions are, I think, a symbol of this era, in which we so often treat the symptoms. But ignore the underlying cause. So I wonder, why don't we just change the context in which the poor live? Or going back to our computer analogy, why keep tinkering around with the software when we can easily solve the problem by installing some extra memory instead? Now at that point, Professor Shafir responded with a blank look, <laughs> and after a few seconds, he said, "Ah,、oh, I get it. You mean you you want to just..." Hand out more money to the poor, to eradicate poverty.、Uh, yeah, sure,、uh, that'd be great. But I'm afraid that brand of left-wing politics you've got in Amsterdam, <laughs> it doesn't exist in the States. But is this really an old-fashioned leftist idea? I remembered reading about an old plan, something that has been proposed by some of history's leading thinkers. The philosopher Thomas More first hinted at it in his book Utopia. More than 500 years ago, and its proponents have spent the spectrum from the left to the right, from the civil rights campaigner Martin Luther King to the economist Milton Friedman. And it's an incredibly simple idea: basic income guarantee. What we would call universal basic income,、mm-hmm. same sort of thing. What it is? Well, that's easy. It's a monthly grant, enough to pay for your basic needs: food, shelter, education. It's completely unconditional, so no one's going to tell you what you have to do for it, and no one's going to tell you what you have to do with it. The basic income is not a favor, but a right. There's absolutely no stigma attached. So, as I learned about the true nature、yes. of poverty, I couldn't stop wondering. I mean, is this the idea we've all been waiting for? Could it really be that simple?、Mm. And in the three years that followed, I read everything I could find about basic income. I researched the dozens of experiments that have been conducted all over the globe, and it didn't take long before I stumbled upon the story of a town that had done it, had actually eradicated poverty. But then, nearly everyone forgot about it. This story starts in Dauphin, Canada. In 1974, everybody in this small town was guaranteed a basic income. Ensuring that no one fell below the poverty line, and at the start of the experiment, an army of researchers descended on the town. For four years, all went well, but then a new government was voted into power, and the new Canadian cabinet saw little point to the expensive experiment. So when it became clear there was no money left to analyze the results, the researchers decided to pack their files away in some 2,000 boxes. Twenty-five years went by, <laughs> and then Evelyn Forge, a Canadian professor, found the records. And for three years, she subjected the data to all manner of statistical analysis. And no matter what she tried, the results were the same every time. The experiment had been a resounding success. Evelyn Forge discovered that the people in Dauphin had not only become richer but also smarter and healthier. The school performance of kids improved substantially. We should, Nicola. Nicola, you're watching, eh? Nicola, yeah, I'm sure you're watching. Say you're more. Watching yeah, say David, you're watching.、More. Good, good, good. Make sure everyone tags them in this when these clips come out. 
the hospitalization rate decreased by as much as 8.5 percent. Domestic violence incidents were down, as were mental health complaints, and people didn't quit their jobs. The only ones who worked a little less were new mothers and students. <laughs> the exact people who you kind of go, yeah, yeah. If you need to take a bit more time, you. You probably should. Now, we're just coming up to the end of this. Uh, as you can see, there's uh, a good six minutes to go. I would. It's, it's linked in the description. You should go and watch the rest of it if you want. We're not going to watch the whole thing tonight. The only ones who worked a little less were new mothers and students who stayed in school longer. Similar results have since been found in countless other experiments around the globe, from the US to India. He then goes into talking about the U.S. can't afford it. That's all we're going to show tonight. Um, and then he, he he breaks down actually how inexpensive this kind of thing is because what it saves on the back end with things like fewer hospitalizations, and that, that it actually pays for itself fairly easily. So as I said, if you're watching us on YouTube, that is linked in the YouTube description. We've watched basically the first nine and a half minutes. If you haven't seen it before, go and watch the rest of it. But Chewie, had you seen that before? And if not, do you want to comment on it? Uh, I haven't seen that. I will point out that uh, that's the same person that called out all the um, rich people at Davos for talking about um, climate change, but flying in on their private jets. Right. <laughs> um, so this is two ticks in his column, my friend.